vote in an election, typically you either vote for the party in a raft of policies and the party leader, or you vote for your constituency MP because you like them and you think they're a good, hard-working MP. So we'll take the two scenarios one by one. If you vote for the leader in this election, your leader is a liability, isn't he? Well, this election campaign's only just started and the, the narratives could change a lot, but I'm standing because I've been a, I think, a hard-working and a diligent MP picking up... Those we'll come on to that, but tell me about Jeremy Corbyn. Is he an issue for you? Is he a problem? No, he's not a, a problem for me, but where people do raise uh, issues around uh, um, the, the, the comparison between the two leaders, I just say, would you rather have a government led by Jeremy Corbyn and his values and his commitments to people in this country, or would you rather have one uh, that's led by Theresa May, who keeps changing her mind, uh, and sometimes we're not even sure what she does stand for? A lot of Labour voters uh, would vote for the party but don't want to vote for Jeremy Corbyn. It's important, isn't it, to have an effective opposition, even if you don't win the election? Leaders come and go, but our values, what we stand for and what we deliver when we're in power and when we're in government is what really matters. And, you know, I would hope if people are voting on party lines that they think about that party and what we delivered when we were in, when we were in government and what we uh, will deliver when we're back in government, if not this time, then in five years, five years after that. So if you take the view that you're voting for your constituency MP rather than the party or the party leader, what do we get if we vote for you? Well, as I say, two years is um, a bit of blink of an eye uh, for, for, for an MP. It's um, not really fair, is it? <laughs> no, I mean, it, you know, as I say, it, I'm it's still getting used to the, to the role. Um, but, I mean, I've, I've been working hard. And, of course, I've been able to build on my record as a councillor where, you know, I was in, instrumental in this London living wage for our staff um, and also the staff of our contractors. Kickstarted regeneration in Hounslow and Brentford town centres um, and uh, also worked a lot on some of the... the, the the, the Chiswick issues. At the invitation of the resident associations uh, in around West Chiswick and Gunnersbury, I've been asked to chair the uh, Gunnersbury Station Action Group to try and uh, unlock some of those problems around Chiswick Park Station. And I've done 20,000 pieces of casework, uh, which um, is a lot for an MP in just two years. Brexit completely overshadows this election. It's quite clear what you think about it because you voted against Article 50. But Mary McLeod said to me that she would have influence if the Conservatives win. What influence would you have if you're not in power? Well, I'd be interested to know what, what influence Mary does think um, she has, because from what she was saying at her things this morning, inherently loyal to her, to the leader of her party, Theresa May. Now, I have stuck my neck out. Um, obviously, I campaigned with all of our party to remain. Um, but once uh, the vote uh, in the UK was to leave the uh, uh, EU, this constituency voted remain. And I voted against triggering Article 50 um, because I believe we have to stand up uh, for what matters to us personally, but also to our area. And I can keep, I keep, um, you know, I've made several interventions and speeches in, in Parliament on the issue, representing the issues that concern people here, such as uh, the rights of EU uh, citizens here, such as the implications on, on businesses here, from IT to, to, to pharmaceuticals and so on. That's the point, though, isn't it? You are clearly a, a politician of principle. I hope so. But you might also be crying in the wilderness. You might be a lone voice or a very small rump in Parliament. So what are your red lines? What will you fight tooth and nail to keep out of an EU negotiation? Well, we must stay in the single market. We need to retain our membership of the major European uh, organisations, which um, makes such a difference uh, that we don't really realise until we're starting to look at the detail of them, such as the European Medicines Agency. Um, we need to uh, ensure free, free movement and retain the rights uh, and enable the EU citizens who are living here to be able to ret retain their full rights, but also UK citizens um, across, the, across the EU. There's a lot of talk in this election about tactical voting 
and the Green Party in Brentford and Isleworth say they've been talking to you about the possibility of them not fielding a candidate, but the talks are going badly. Why is that? I wouldn't say that the, the, the talks are going um, are not going well. I mean, the, the Green Party, like uh, our own party, there are differences of opinion. But you could endorse all of the policies that Rupert Huck has said she would endorse. She'll fight against the third runway. Yes. She'd said that she would actively promote um, proportional representation. Yeah. And I've told the, Green, the, the Hounslow branch of the Green Party that as well, um, that proportional representation is, is something that I, I support and I'm, I'm happy to actively support. Um, of course I will continue to campaign against the third runway. I have been doing So why do they think years. talks are going badly? Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, they, uh, the, 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 each local Green Party, um, as far as I understand, is able to make its own uh, decision about whether or not to stand. So what have they asked you for then? Uh, more, more or less the same. Um, so, yeah. So what's but the problem? I, 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 different, I think, what, what I understand is there are members of the Green Party who believe that as a political party they should always stand at all elections. Um, there are other members of the Green Party who believe strongly that they should stand aside in order to ensure one less Tory MP gets elected. Um, <laughs> they, they, they're here entitled to, to their different views and uh, I will leave it to them to make up their minds. So what's your sense about what, what will decide this election? What are people voting on? Is it leadership? Is it Brexit? Is it housing and education? That's a really interesting question. I think every door I go to has a different answer, it seems. Um, you know, for some, for some it's about leadership. For, for many, it's about um, issues such as housing, the NHS, uh, the rundown of public services. A lot of people have lost their own jobs. A lot of people um, had uh, not, uh, you know, they're just about managing, if you like, had not particularly well-paid jobs, but they're finding that their terms and conditions are gradually being undermined or they fear that they will be undermined as they see their employer bringing in more agency staff. Um, a lot of, for other people it's the state of the environment, for some people it's about Heathrow Airport. So it's, it's really, really varied. I was looking at the New Statesman's list of 50 Labour MPs who are likely to lose their seats and uh, you come in at number four. So how do you feel about that? It's a challenge and I'm up for it. Um, if we'd had a normal, uh, if we'd if we'd gone the same swing as everywhere else, uh, I wouldn't have been elected as an MP in in 2015. So I bucked the trend in in 2015. I'm going to aim to buck the trend in 2017 and win again.